Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, Ron here with Tech Tips to Go. So today's video is uh, it's gonna be a lengthy one because I'm gonna answer a lot of um, the questions you guys had on my channel. But anyways, to start, so I know you guys are a lot of um, V Chain followers, V Fam, etc. So just wanted to give you another perspective. Like so, like I mentioned, we do supply chain solutions for like hardware solutions uh, in Toronto and Canada. Actually, we do it across the North America. So I travel actually when travel was enabled like i think i've been to almost every airport in the u.s and canada been to peru been to mexico did work in uh netherlands like i i you know when you're younger like you like to travel like when i first got into like supply chain solutions and consulting i always wanted to travel but then after a year you're like man get me out of here because you eat you eat good you drink good uh, all company meals are paid for so you're just constantly like in hotels you're out of your routine of working out and kind of staying healthy and you're going out for drinks and food and eating and, and it just you, like as you get older in your career and you start doing this you kind of like slow down on like going out with all the guys and, and drinking and eating whatever you want so anyways um like this perspective is like so i've got a couple of meetings here and i just want to show you like a lot of my customers' response are the same thing that probably like VTrain is running into is like no one's really kind of operating, you know, 100%, maybe not even 50, not even like 40%. So I get this email and I just said, you know, hey, just following up to see how things are going with operations and more. Uh, have you decided on a solution for the wireless rollout, right? Because we're doing like a software implementation and a hardware rollout for on the wireless end not for like RFID, barcode scanning, etc. And basically, uh, they came back and just said, good morning, everything has been postponed due to COVID-19. I'll get back to you once all is restored. Thank you. So this is like a, a really large company in Toronto. It's a, it's a tire corporation. So we're doing a rollout across Canada. Anyways, I anyways, I want to go through some of your questions and I want to give you all a shout out and thanks for helping me grow the channel. So I'm going to start uh, for some questions Dalroy, shout out to you. You collected 12 BTC on the wallet, which is good. Saigon11, thanks for subscribing. Yeah, I know I agree. Like, the shares are a whole different animal than tokens. Uh, this is a problem I keep seeing in cryptocurrency. And it's true. It's like the token value has no correlation with how many are using the platform. So, and that's a thing. Like, it's so different with like traditional stocks and cryptocurrencies. Like, you would think that V Chain would be like at two dollars with the amount of partnerships and news that have come out. But, and that's why I say I think it's just a matter of time because no one can really time when we're gonna moon. And that's what we're all in here for, right? Like, Bitcoin, the last halving. If you guys were in the halving before 2017, you've seen kind of how it grew. But if you were in the last bull run, like. It was exciting and this is exciting and I, I knew like we were going to kind of be like flat just with everything. I think we're delayed like three, four months. I think we're going to have a bull run probably like 2021 is just my feeling more Q2. So anyways, like I mentioned, like you're, you're, you're spot on Saigon. Like you would think that we would be mooning based on all the partnerships that VTrain has. But when it comes to like tokenomics, it's it's kind of different like with, with that and blockchain technologies. So, uh, anyways, luxury homes. Thanks, Neil Griffiths. Yeah, you know what, Neil? Cool. I I want. I'm gonna Neil. If you watch this video, Neil Griffiths, message me on Twitter because um, I'm looking at getting a place in Phuket. So in Thailand, Phuket. So I I just got back from Phuket in January 2020, uh, right before coronavirus. We actually flew through Dengu in China, and uh, I was kind of worried that I might have caught. COVID or whatever right just because we we're on a plane like a huge plane and we we're in the airport for a while but anyways that was like leaving from Phuket that was our last destination like we went Maldives Thailand Phuket Bangkok etc and Phuket was just awesome like I love Thailand just the people the culture the food um, the beaches it's relaxed right I'm in Toronto and it's like hustle and bustle and you're just in your daily grind but anyways uh, he says, my concern is VC gets its moonshot and soars. CCP comes and takes it over. Yeah, and you never know, right? And they've done that, like, with Jack Ma, with Alibaba. Like, they could take over, right? Like, when it comes into, like, the digital one, the, the currencies that maybe if China gets into blockchain, like, we never know. Like, VeChain might get involved with digital currencies and, 
you know, they might be involved in some kind of exchange and we never know what like that government is capable of or will do. Like you just never know. It's not, it's not, it's not like the U S or, or Canada, right? We have set rules that we can operate by. They can just kind of take over there. Uh, yeah, me, he responds. Timing is everything. Uh, this is, this event is time to load on more shares. If you like V chain at, you know, seven cents, why wouldn't you like it at four cents? And like I mentioned before, like you guys know, I got into like VeChain as well, around seven cents or six cents. And if you like the project, then why wouldn't you like it even more at four cents, right? But then again, not financial advice. Like take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's all risk. You know, whether you're you're into Nasdaq, TSX, you know, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, whether you think Bitcoin is like the safest, you know, safe heaven, like, or cryptocurrency out there it's all a risk you're putting your money don't afford what you can't lose and, and kind of move on like like i mentioned like if you like vchain at seven cents why wouldn't you like it even more at four cents if you believed in what they have and they keep developing and growing and getting more partnerships and those partners are doing more work then great right because like i said these these projects don't go overnight even in business you know, it takes years to build a relationship, it takes them like a minute to lose it, right? They keep building these relationships and with the partners that they have and w from what we've seen in like the last quarter, like, I think that's great news. Like, you know, they're the partnerships that they've created with like last year, they're finally coming in alive, starting the projects, getting on the main net, uh, Shanghai gas, uh, rebonds, H and M we see other things like, I mean, block babies and then the APAC council with Australia, right? These are big wins, right? And sometimes I shake my head because then you look at um, the ticker, right? Or you see like on Binance, did anything move? Did we kind of like move at least 0 0.001 or no? But yeah, it's frustrating. Like I get frustrated too, but I think long-term guys, like if you are in the short term, then I would say just like day trade. But if you're in hit here for the long term, like, learn to get a little more patience, uh, huddle on, be patient, right? And like I said, like Tesla and these other companies didn't grow overnight. You know, it was, it was slow, like just so hopefully we will all reward later, right? And uh, give everyone a pat on the back. Let's meet in Vegas. Uh, Steve G, the general advice given to the public is not to time the market. Idiots. Yeah, Neil Griffiths hooked me up in uh, Phuket. I'm going to reach out to me on Twitter. I want to uh, get some advice for getting a villa. Because uh, we Airbnb'd in this nice villa. And I, I, they were banking. I like. I think we paid, like, it was pretty, wasn't cheap. Like, I stayed in, like, some other hotels that were, like, three, four thousand 4000 a night in Maldives. But in Phuket, for what we got, we got a huge villa. Looking over, like, uh, Karan, Karan uh, Beach. We had our own pool and everything, and it was big, and it was like 500 bucks a night, and, and it was just awesome, like, for what you get. But anyways, like, they were fully booked. We had to book with them, like, for that villa, like, a year in advance, but they were straight booked, and uh, that's why I kind of want to do an investment there, semi-retire, go back and forth, like, between Vegas, Toronto, uh, Thailand. That's kind of my plan. Um, it's all about timing, V-Chain. Thanks, Ron. R. Williams, yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks for the support. And you, I forgot your name, but you always ask me, long time to wait and rise. Uh, ETH is crap or crappy for now. You know what? I like Ethereum. Ethereum, I think, is a great project. It's hard to say that Ethereum is a bad project because everything runs on Ethereum. Like, you look at Maker. Like, how much do they have locked up in DeFi? Like, six... 600 to 800 million locked up in DeFi. A lot of platforms are running on Ethereum. Um, the transactions per second in the near future is going to be huge or it's going to increase. Ethereum staking, supply and demand. That's why I'm pretty bullish on Ethereum. There's a lot of Ethereum haters, but you know, like they've got developers to work on their product. It's the same thing like VeChain if they don't develop or upgrade or, or, you know, they have customers paying for their mainnet and if they're not doing any development, what are they paying for? Right. As long as they, they continually update the mainnet, the software, their network, then they'll be fine. Especially with the amount of developers Ethereum has, 
you can't go wrong like with that project that that's my personal opinion i like staking i like passive income guys like passive income is just like i think it's great and that's why i like real estate like real estate is my thing terry williams uh try accessing binance in china you can't it's blocked however ocean x This one's for Brian Kim. Uh, you like to um, ask a lot about predictions. I don't like doing predictions, like hard predictions. Uh, I'll give estimates of like when we might see bull runs, but like I do TA. Like I do like when I'm buying, I'll do TA. I'll look at the wicks, candles. I'll I'll do analysis just for myself. But I don't like to give that advice just to a lot of people unless you're you're very close to me because it's it's risk again, right? I don't. I'll feel bad if you dump your life savings on all this stuff and it goes wrong for you right so you said let's do some predictions uh dip to low 7k for btc by june slowly increase to fourteen thousand by the end of the year hmm. end of year 2020 i i think we're gonna reach higher so by end of the year i think we're gonna reach higher than fourteen thousand what will VeChain do by then? I don't know. Um, I'm not going to give a hard date. But I'll be happy if VeChain's like a penny. 0 0.01 by end of year. And this could all change, right? Like everything changes could change in like the next day. Like if Bitcoin gets that bull run and that, that jump, good. If we get news on the vaccine, if we get news on more stimulus, if we get the care package 2.0 2, 2 in the U.S., like for you Americans, that thing's changed. Like today's stock market changed pretty uh, a lot. Like there's more, it seems like there's more consumer confidence. Like the stimulus package, less amount of confirmed cases for COVID. And uh, that's kind of building consumer confidence. So I think we're going to see like more retail investment spending on the stock markets on the exchanges etc so that's going to kind of trickle down to cryptocurrencies and there's some news out there with um jp morgan chase so jp morgan chase has enabled or is allowing like crypto extra currency exchanges for for lending and borrowing so crypto.com is now working with jp morgan chase for for actually for lending so i think they're lending crypto.com some some funds and that's good because it's kind of opening the doors for allowing more for banking and other investment or firms to kind of like open up that market for crypto lending, right? That That's kind of big news. Uh, Gypsy King says, keep up the great content, Ron. Appreciate your perspective. Thanks. Uh, the timing feels right for VeChain on so many levels. Next few years should be exciting. Yeah. Like I'm, uh, I'm going to look at these videos like a year from now and it'll be exciting because we got the bull run. We all know like post having bull run is probably more what we were all looking for and excited for. Like pre, post and actual having, we're like, ah, nothing's going to really happen. Nothing's going to move. All the new investors were probably like offloading their stuff right now. So we're probably seeing like the market kind of go like this, maybe a little down. But those are those new investors that were so excited and so new into cryptocurrency. And they're like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm into the Bitcoin having you hear about this having it's gonna be great. I'm gonna dump twenty grand. Nothing happened. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take my money out before it goes down. But they're so new that maybe they're just so inexperienced, right? But I, you know, I'm not claiming I'm an expert or anything. But see more truth. What's up? Yeah, it's timing for VeChain. Now is a perfect storm, or supply chain is getting exposed. Yeah, and that's why I like this project is because, guys, like I'm in supply chain and, and and I've been in it for so long. So I know like potential, like I, I've been in like all of these enterprise supply chain, medical, automotive, like I've seen like numbers. I've seen how much software costs, implementations, professional services, deployment. So I understand like project delays, software update developments, you know, roadblocks. Um what actually got me into the project was um, D&B Schenker. So 
I used to be in D&B Schenker's, like, I'm still pretty big with all of the uh, Canadian execs over here. So, I was working with D&B Schenker on a couple of projects out in Mississauga, out west, and I knew, like, you know, because every warehouse that they would have, they would name it, like, by what product they're storing in it. So I'd know which which site I was going into. So I, like there was Colgate, Colgate and Bolton. So I'm like, okay, hey, they'd call like, hey, Ron, we need you to go to uh, Colgate. I'm like, then I put two and two together. I'm like, oh, Colgate is in the city of uh, Bolton or Manchester. It's on Manchester Road in Bolton. Or they'd, oh, we need you to go to Sunlight. Okay, we need you to go to um, GSK. GSK is in Mississauga, so like GSK, the pharmaceutical company, so they're like third party. Then we need you to go to BMW, or we need you to go to Pan Am Games, or or to Michelin, etc. So that was kind of interesting. And that's what got me interested into V Chain. I started doing more homework in supply chain and V Chain, and, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, blockchain technologies. Like I always, in, always into Bitcoin before, but then you know I heard of Vet and Ven and V Chain, but I didn't really get into it until. Because I was just so busy with business until I kind of sat down and said, okay, where else am I going to invest some some money other than like Ethereum and Bitcoin? Like what other altcoins can I bag like millions of, right? So. MD only major. What's going on? He says, I love your videos um, because of chain is also my largest holding as well. Uh, what do you think about Holochain and Chainlink? I think they're great projects. I think Chainlink is a great project. Holochain, like, yeah, it's got potential, right? Like, I, I think it's like VeChain, like, you just learn to hold, hold on long term, wait for the bull run, exit out. Like, my positions are, I'm holding on to Bitcoin for a very, very long time. Like, Ethereum, very, very long. VeChain, maybe not as long because I'm at a stage at my, my life where I want to kind of exit faster, but I think Bitcoin in the long run with that with that hard cap of supply and demand and only 21 million left i want to see what potential it, it could grow to because it'd be so cool that if you only belong to that one percent of people that own one full bitcoin is cool like i own like more bitcoin but it, it's cool because like let's say bitcoin does get to a million dollars and people like 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 no one can really afford like one bitcoin so what do they do they, they buy altcoins so that's why I'm helping with this channel with mass adoption and just talking about like, you know, V chain and like how great a coin and the company is. That's why I like to talk about it. And like, you know, I like Ethereum, like Ethereum doesn't really need that much media and exposure because they're, they're Ethereum. They're so big, but like with, with V chain, I'm kind of helping out like mass adoption, like educating people of like other altcoins, right. And how great the project is. So that's where I kind of stand. Like Ethereum and Bitcoin are pretty cool. I hope Ethereum, you know, in terms of market cap, outgrows Bitcoin, which I doubt. But the supply and demand of Bitcoin and having, you know, at least if you belong to that 1% and own one Bitcoin, uh, you belong to that, you know, that 1%. And if you can own a full Bitcoin, that's pretty cool to say. Imagine it goes to a million. And, and I, you know, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even doubt if it got to a million. When? Maybe in 10 years, maybe in five years. Who knows? But with the supply and demand and only 21 million left, I think that's why I think that Bitcoin is, is cool. And who cares if it, it's slow in transactions per second? Use it as store of value or digital gold. That's it, right? Supply and demand, The you know, it does proof of proof of work, not proof of stake. Like they got the miners. Just let Bitcoin be Bitcoin. Ethereum, let Ethereum like keep developing and doing what they do. Kashmiri Zidi, I like your videos. Thanks. Um, also holding VET bullish on the project. Yeah, for sure. TA. Uh, VeChain is in the first in its category. They are pioneers. I've often heard it's not that interesting to be the first in a market. What do you think about this in terms as an investor? Um, I don't really care if you're the first in the market. I, I don't care if you're like in the first in the market. So VeChain is the first in its category, right? They are the pioneers. I've often heard it's not that interesting to be in the market. What do you think about this in terms of investor? 
Uh, yeah, I don't really care if you're the first in market. Like, it could be a good thing because if you're, in, I would say it's more on the plus side because if you're an early investor or early adopter of that technology, you've built your experience in the years of building credibility in the market. So if you're in the first in blockchain enterprise solutions, you can say, well, you've been doing this for X amount of years. And over the years, you're going to build partnerships and relationships, right? And you can build upon those experiences. So when you go to market, you've got that experience, which which is great. GQ talks about Exodus, promoting Exodus a lot. Alex Lynch, uh, great video. I have a question, though. I'm not sure if you can answer it, but you talk about real estate from your experiences. Those experiences are in Canada and United States, Thailand. Do you know something about real estate in my country, the Netherlands? Is it basically the same in other country? Or, for example, Canada a lot different than in the U.S.? Thanks in advance. Um, I'm not too familiar with, like, outside of, like, real estate investing from, like, Canada and the U.S. Like, I prefer the U.S. right now. We get a better return on investment, maybe, maybe about seven. But all in all, it's like they're paying, like, your renters are paying for your your mortgage sure you've got interest in principal like how much are they paying your principal down you have to do your due deal you have to do your numbers look at your numbers and everything but the way I, like the reason why i like it is because real estate goes in its cycles right so if you especially if you're buying like pre-construction and you know the market in pre-construction you could easily gain like a 20 to sixty thousand dollar like on a condo so condos in toronto go for like 500 to seven so probably like 600,000 for like a 400 square foot, like really small, like probably like Manhattan, New York rates, right? And that's why I like it. So like if you could afford a down payment, put a chunk down, you you sit on it and the pre-construction, hopefully nothing happens, like the project doesn't bail because then let's say you wait a year and a half for you, for you to flip it or for you to get it into it and rent it. You've probably already gained like 40 grand just on the value of that condo going up as long as that the market is right. But it's it's hard to say because Toronto has such a strong market, and then the rental market in Toronto is is strong. Also, trying to get into home, like people can't really afford like a condo or a home in Toronto, so that's why the rental market is strong. So look at every pocket in every area. Like right now, like I I like Las Vegas because well before this whole pandemic, like the economy was strong, it was growing, it went through its dip and it was growing. Now they're getting like so much stuff like football, hockey, like MMA, like. A new stadium new hotels the trades industry is growing they don't have enough like workers there so like we like to kind of like buy around not not schools like so here's some advice for now like stay away from airbnbs i would do airbnbs like airbnbs if you're getting like a thailand place but stick to like when you're you're getting tenants stay away from students try and get something near near nursing homes long-term care facility homes hospitals Right, because hospitals are going to employ a lot of people. People that move in, what they're they're going to be looking for, like cheap rent or or something affordable. So that's what we like to do. Um, and then just do your homework. Uh, look to see the going rates, and then figure out how much cash flow you can bring in. And then um, you know how long a real estate property can get listed in terms of a lease, and then how soon does it go? So you can see the demand. Like if you were to get another renter. How fast or how soon can you get someone in to rent in there? So that's how I would approach real estate in, in your country. Uh, Seth Easy says, where can I sell my V-Chain for dollars if it ever hits a dollar? So this is what I mentioned. So if you have that, sell it on an exchange, like convert it to BTC and then figure out what what exchange like coinbase can sell it for you into your paypal so for me they don't take like a stable coin that you can for convert it because the risk that you have is like let's say you take vet and you you have a pair like btc or ethereum it could go up or down and you don't want to go down when you want to go to cash out so typically what you want to do is you want to put it in a stable coin where it doesn't fluctuate so you sell it at the price into a stable coin but when you bring it over when you transfer it like from that wallet to wherever, let's say it's Coinbase, you want to make sure that Coinbase has that pair to sell. Like if it's USD or if you have USD on your wallet or, or Binance USD on your wallet, can you sell it on Coinbase? But for Coinbase, no, you can't. They don't have that like to cash out. What I meant like in short, I thought you were more advanced, but in short, what I meant is like take your vet, 
take the pair, let's say it's BTC, cash it out on Coinbase. That's it. David Forbes, what's going on? Jonathan Jacobs. Hopefully ADA and VeChain can cover the XRP losses. Yeah. Like I mentioned, I got r rid of a lot of my XRP. I bought in again, but I'm XRP is probably like my, my very short coin that I'm like kind of dumping and moving a lot. Probably eventually like getting rid of XRP in general and just sticking with like a handful of coins. I just don't think like XRP... Well, I don't know. I, I, this is hard to say. I know there's a lot of XRP people probably watching, but the problem with XRP, like I mentioned, is like it's great, but they just keep diluting like like the coin so much. And the thing is, there's a lot of people who exit at XRP for many reasons. And one of the reasons is like for me is like, yes, cross border payments is great, but how many people are you actually using that token? And will the banks start to allow? like the token of XRP to be used for like fiat, for payments, for et cetera, right? We don't know, maybe in like the Asian Asian countries, but when will that come? I don't know. And when it reached 384, like it didn't have much utility, like it was just on speculation. So now like when you saw it throughout the years, like 384 and down, 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 and as they approved, they got more customers, flat, 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 down, 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 flat, 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 down. And really wasn't pick up momentum and a lot of people are exiting and that's that was one of the main reasons so I'm just doing a lot of shorts on there I'm like buying in 19 cents it'll come up 22 sell 22 rebuy back in and 19 goes back up 20 sell you know so I'm I'm in and out of XRP the most the ones that I'm huddling on is like Bitcoin Ethereum V chain those are like top three ADA I like uh, crypto MCO CRO CLK, what do you realistically see VET getting to the first bull run? Curious on your stake. The first bull run? Like I said, like I'll be happy with 0 0.01 to 3 cents. The bull run, like, I just can't answer that because, like, if Bitcoin's bull run is max 14K, then what, what will VeChain be? I don't know. But I'm expecting, like, a bull run, like, probably bigger than 14k so i don't know like the the main factors that i'm looking at is like okay well if there's more news on, on some kind of like antibody or vaccine that'll put more consumer confidence or if we get a vaccine great that's going to instill consumer confidence right but consumer confidence like we all know it's like not everyone's going to get their jobs right away so that's one factor this whole thing has put everything delayed plus more like into the hole big time if there was none of this, I'd be so much more bullish on everything. But with this whole thing, consumer confidence, vaccine, the bull run, those are the, like the main factors that I'm looking at because we see more retail investors in the market in crypto for sure, right? Like, but right now it's not. So I, I don't really want to answer that. Like I, like I said, I'll be happy by end of year of like 0.03 uh, towards like 2021 Q2 is where I'm going to start monitoring and looking and seeing what positions I'm going to take again. Uh, Wanderlust says, uh, shout out William Fraser. Thanks. Uh, Wanderlust. ETH will have lower returns, in my opinion, 48%. Yeah, you know what? Ethereum 2 is kind of all, all, all over the place. Like, I think for the first year, we might have like 10 to 15% staking. Um, and then things might change. But even if we get lower staking percentage, I'm just hoping by the amount of ETH that's going to be issued will drop in half or drop around 2 million. And then more of these like institutional investors are going to gobble like Rescale. I hope that they gobble as much Ethereum as they can. So there's less ETH too on the market, which will bring, you know, the, the demand making the, the price higher. So I don't care if we get less staking, but I think it's just proof of stake is kind of cool. And I think we're going to get like 15% in, in the first year. And then hopefully, you know, maybe it'll maintain, but we never know. Like, that's why I'm excited to see how this pans out. Uh, yeah, ADA, like coins that have a, a higher ROI. Yeah, like I like that project with, with Cardano. It's just, it's this thing, it's speculative because you don't know after the test, not after Shelly, after how things go. They're saying it's going to be a lot better than Ethereum, et cetera, but... We're, this is all speculation so we don't know and that's where you're putting your money and that's why i'm not putting a lot of money into that 
like I feel safer putting my money, like a lot of my money towards VeChain and Ethereum just because of partnerships. And main thing is utility and partnerships and clients is the reason why I, I picked VeChain. And like I said, like it's a ride that I'm willing to afford to risk. And, and it's fun too, like being in this, like the VeChain, seeing the partnerships. Like I, I like the team. David Forbes, UFC fan, yeah. Congrats on your daughter being a Muay Thai fighter. I, I love Muay Thai. Love UFC. Um, love NBA and at UFC. I'm a big NBA Raptors fan. I got season tickets for the Raptors, and I liked when Demar Derozan was on, on the Raptors. And big UFC fan. Yeah, I'm a huge UFC fan. Three Eyed Rebel. I'm getting high off the hopium. I'd be happy with Vichin at three dollars end of 2021. Just look at how XRP went from zero zero six to four bucks. Is it? It's possible VeChain has been around a while too and is constantly developing and has real use cases to track items on supply chain, which is actually a big issue, especially with counterfeit. This can be huge, and this is just one use case. Yeah, and like I said, like until we start seeing stuff on the main net, test net development, VTHO burn then yeah but you never know like everything could be speculation too like as more retail investors come in like i wouldn't even doubt that like it, it would get to three dollars based on speculation just because of people believing in it and that's what happens a lot like it's just it could be like market people are speculated on on a certain stock that they have it has potential and it could go to like three dollars in a bull run with without any further vth burn and you never know and that's what's exciting about this whole cryptocurrency market so when people talk about timing like i just say like i don't know like if i had that crystal ball then yeah i'd tell you guys but i'm like you guys like just hoping for a great bull run enjoy the ride and keep hodling and like i said if you if you like the project when you first got in why would you not like it like it's lower enjoy the ride stop being impatient and keep going Brian Kim, I've uh, been watching your channel, smashing the like button and subscribe. Thanks. Uh, you gave me full faith to hold on to millions V chain. LOL. Thanks. Yeah, you know what? Like, I believe in the project. And like I said, like, even if the project fails, like, I'm still enjoying the ride. Will I enjoy the money lost? No, but it's the risk you take. Elias, dude, you're the man. You bring different point of view from a businessman perspective. We appreciate all your insights and knowledge. I'm a huge believer in vet. Thanks. Yeah, you're a veteran. Cool. Uh, Atomic Wallet, Poke AMD, Passive Income. Yeah. So you use Atomic Wallet to stake vet since it's daily and doesn't require me to freeze. That's good if you do that, if it doesn't freeze for three months and i know i know a lot of staking rewards is usually like you hold it in there for three months and then you get like a a six to eight to 16 to 18 percent reward on that so that's cool and that's what's attracting a lot of people to certain altcoins a lot of people are getting to certain altcoins because of the rewards they want that passive income and people are seeing that people are talking about like well we would like more more passive income just from staking right holding on the exchanges but you always have that risk of losing potential your stack based on how long you keep it in there but that's why you have to do your due diligence and see like well how many followers or how many people are on the network you know how many investors who's in it what's the possibilities of it like completely going like quite like that company in bc uh what other questions you got here Chris K three three five. I've been dollar cost averaging a bit more in vet in the last twenty four hours. Also XTZ for staking a big one. Since you're in the biz, per se, does vet solve any cost or implementation issues versus traditional provider like SAP? If so, just in another arrow they potentially have for growth. Uh, nice R eight by the way. Another great video. Thanks. So the advantage of like your traditional like centralized database. And like a public one is like you have smart contracts, you have traceability, 
verifying things, smart contracts. Everything's on the public blockchain. That's the main thing. So if you like, whether it's VeChain or other public blockchains, let's say like with VeChain, like when it comes to SAP, SAP is just like a single use database within an organization. So you have SAP and that's it. You're using it for like ERP payments. They have modules for like different different um, groups within an environment like HR, a WMS environment, which is like your warehouse supply chain. So they have all these modules, but it's just a, a centralized database that'll collect information, whether it's picking, packing, and put away, um, and then issuing a PO and printing it. That's it. So that's what you have. And then typically when you issue something, you might be able to do like some kind of secure email send from SAP to your customer to say, here's the issue of the amount. That's it. But it's, you know, maybe data can get exchanged from here to there. So with, with a public blockchain, you can share all that information between whoever you want to with ever, whoever parties that you want, and you don't have to rebuild specific supply chain software databases for each one because each SAP implementation takes man hours, takes time, takes software, takes licenses, and all at the end of the day, like one SAP implementation for one organization of like 200 employees might cost you half a million dollars, uh, sorry, $5 million, three to $5 million dollars plus ongoing maintenance, maybe like quarter million dollars a year, $300,000 a year. So that's how much it costs. And then you talk about upgrades. Then you got to do upgrades every three years. So if you had a public blockchain like, like VeChain, you can share certain information along the chain. And then when you're integrating like maybe AI into to public blockchains where you can start talking about like APAC provenance, like with MasterCard and Alipay, that's a game changer because then you start integrating like payment solutions and you don't really have to worry about okay, well, now we're doing payment solutions. Do I have to get an e-commerce? What kind of PCI compliance do I have to integrate into like my centralized database in SAP so my customer can see that? Now everything's public. It's a game changer, right? And that's the same thing like with public blockchains with different applications. Like let's say, have you ever heard of a, a, a project called SciaCoin? SciaCoin is like cloud technology like, like Dropbox or like Microsoft One. So they're using public blockchain for the same thing. You know, um, each validator is going to have to hold X amount of like validate that and then allow storage. And it's all on a public blockchain where it's not really centralized anymore. So which is cool. And that's why blockchain is so interesting. And there's so much capability of what it can or can't do. Right. Or mostly what it can. So that's that's the advantage. It's like you're not just stick, stuck with like a central database in this small environment. And that's it where you're limited to like your customer just getting an email or authorization for like PO and then that's it. Okay, Z. Uh, truth is 99% of all cryptos will die in the upcoming two years. There are some cryptos that create significant value. Uh, he says, what I like about VeChain is that it's China-based and the Belt and Road Initiative will revolutionize supply chains to depths we've never seen before. Yeah. And if you can hold on that long because the Belt and Road Initiative is a long, long project, but as they start to develop and work on the, the Belt and Road Initiative and VeChain gets involved and DNVGL and PwC, that's going to bring more credibility to like VeChain and will rise its stock. You know, the, the, the coin is going to rise in value. Uh, he says, I don't know if VeChain will get to 5 to $10, but if it sure does have a good chance, uh, remember to diversify and keep your tokens off the exchange. Yeah. Yeah, it's like people think you know, people are, they have high expectations, like it's going to go to $75, but I think it'll be tough, like to get to, to get to $75, let, let alone five to $10. Like I'd be happy with like one to $3, $3. Like it'll be, because if you think of what it is now at 0 0.004, how much percentage gain is that? at three dollars is that like three hundred thousand i don't know it's like it's a lot so and you picture the market cap and that's why bitcoin will have to you know 50x that right so or, or 100x that so if you think of if you don't think bitcoin can get to like a million dollars and that's you know 100x if you 100x like v chain what would that be sitting at right you're talking about you know 40 cents so if you're thinking about it going to 75, 
that's where you have to be realistic. Like, will I get to 75? Will I get to $4 or $5? If you 100x it, right? If you 100x, like I said, it's going to be 40 cents. Crypto fan XRP. Yeah, love the content and like the pen. Yeah. I always try to hold this pen. I always like, I get calls and I'm always writing down some stuff. Uh, shout out to Jonathan Jacobs. Crypto Cash, why do you love VeChain so much? I think it's just a great project. I like a lot of projects. I like Ethereum, ADA, Bitcoin. Alex Lynch again. Follow Alex Lynch on uh, Twitter. Connie, what's going on? Shout out from South Africa. Connie H, cool. South Africa. Gordon Duncan, shout out. Vemi, what's going on, Vemi? Ron Allen, what's up? Terry Williams, Daniel, Alex Lynch, Boris, your audio needs upgrading. Look into that. Mr. Lou, uh, he's looking at VET as a 10 year investment. Yeah, and I should look at you know that as a 10 year investment, but then along the way, it's like, where do you sell? Where do you keep, right? Um, I could hold for 10 years. Chris K three three five. You bought some vet overnight when it dropped, yeah. DCA it. Just keep buying it. DCA it. End of time. Shout out to you, Will G Goodson. Uh, Will Goodson is seventy five not possible even in twenty years. Wouldn't that be trillions in market cap? Yeah, and that's why I said like I just talked about that. It, it'll be difficult. NS theory, um, things are switching pretty fast. We could hit a dollar by 2021. By 2021, it, like like I said, like it, it really depends. Like we could, maybe, yeah. Like if Bitcoin goes to like millions, maybe. But so many things involved, like factors. Mr. Chris, what's going on? Uh, you've been an X node holder for since 2017. He's a firm believer that VeChain will deliver and make all hodlers with a degree of patience. AMK shout out, Zion, Bayblader, David Forbes, George Flores, JKH, balls deep on VET and ETH. Yeah, that's me right there. Balls deep on VET and ETH. I don't know. I don't know why you guys don't like ETH. ETH, ETH is strong, even though um, Deloitte left ETH for for VeChain. But like I said, like if you look at Ethereum and almost everything runs on Ethereum. Michael Spastic, yeah. Everything's running. Well, VeChain is partnering with many players, yeah. What's going on, Finn? Jonathan Jacobs, R. Williams, Slick Rick. Ah, uh, last question, guys. Uh, Slick Rick, can you explain how to invest in real estate? So real estate, go to RBC. They have a new loan program for uh, Royal Bank. You could, get, you could start taking out like a 30-year term on your investment to buy real estate in the US now. So when we were buying US, we would just buy them cash. So we had chunks of money just buy real estate in cash and that's it. So now you can get a traditional RBC foreign mortgage in the States at a 30 year term, which is good because, well, not right now, but maybe in like a year and a half, look into it. But it also depends on the dollar. So when, when look at the exchange, look at Forex, foreign exchange. See when the dollar is like fluctuating up or down, find the right time, maybe along the way, like bag bag US dollars, right? Because the, the dollar is like a dollar thirty to forty, which which hurts. It's a lot. You gotta buy a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand uh, dollar home in in the US. That's like two hundred and sixty Canadian, maybe two eighty. So those are some of the things you have to look out for. Go to RBC. Um, next you figure out like rental rates go to rentometer.com rentometer figure out how much you could rent it for look get a real estate person figure out how fast you can rent that out and do everything uh virtually don't, don't you don't even have to go to the u.s just through a phone through facetime um and the main thing is just ask if it's rent ready like is it in condition for rent ready then go to your property manager find a property manager that can help you with Renting it out, usually about like 50 to $75, you pay. But if it's not rented, you don't pay $75. Make sure that that rental company is always on top, like leaks, calls, because you don't want calls coming to you. 
you don't want complaints and then look at the reviews so find a good property manager that's going to do all your homework because you're paying them you know for their service make sure that tenant never calls you they're always calling property manager make sure you always see the bills and they're not gouging you on service and repair let's go on the fish corn trini for life anyways last shout out is uh going to v chain view uh v chain view on twitter i always talk to you anyways um Go follow him on Twitter, Alex Lynch, and then uh, VeChain Hodler out there. So anyways, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one, and uh, keep hodling, guys.